uh, what I want to preach this morning is on our creative purpose, man's, man's creative purpose. And we see it right there in Revelation 4.11 uh, as we're uh, uh, singing praise unto the Lord that he is worthy uh, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. That is man's creative purpose, to glorify his creator, to honor his father, to please him in everything that he does. Uh, he is worthy. He's worthy of everything that we have. He's worthy for us to give him glory and honor and power because he has created us and he's created us so that we would please him. <clears throat> so keep that in mind as I go through the message. I've shared this with you before, I believe, but when I was a kid, uh, a young boy, I used to think, and I remember a couple specific times where, when I would lay in bed and I would just think, who am I? Why am I here? And I would think, well, I'm Braxton, but who am I? And I would think to myself, I exist. You know, I just, uh, this amazing feeling that I exist, but this uh, lack of knowing what my purpose was or who I really was. Why am I here? Who am I? And uh, I found that answer out pretty quickly through the life that I lived. Uh, I found out that I was lost. I found out that I was blind. I found out that I was dead. Uh, I found out that I really didn't know who I was. <laughs> and I tried to find that out in every uh, thing that I did uh, by trying to make my own way, by trying to find my own path. And I believe that this is uh, what all of us go through in one way or another. We all are trying to find out who we are. We're all trying to make a name for ourselves or find out, our, find, make our own path or our own way or to create our own identity. And, uh, you know, there, there's this idea nowadays that whatever way or whatever path that you have taken uh, or that you take, you know, all these ways eventually will lead to God. But that's a lie. Uh, Proverbs 14, 12 says that there is a way which seems right to a man, but in the end, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And so we're born into this world. We don't really know who we are. We don't know who our Heavenly Father is. We don't know who our Creator is. And we are trying to make a way for ourselves. We're trying to create our own identity in this world. Uh, but the truth is, and what the Bible says, that there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. And so in, in every way that we try to take uh, by our own strength or by our own might, eventually it will be vain. Eventually it will lead to destruction. It will lead to death. And uh, even as kids, like I'm noticing this, I, I knew I did it as a kid uh, when I, as far back as I can remember, but I'm noticing this with Liliana. Uh, you know, I love to take her hand and to try to protect her and make sure that she's safe and that she's going the right direction. But it's not very long after that she tries to take her hand away and she tries to run her own way or her own direction. And uh, we kind of do that uh, ourselves in our, in our life. Uh, many of us find our identity or try to find out who we are uh, by initially maybe through our family. You know, I, I'm my mother's or father's son. I'm, uh, you know, so and so, I'm part of so-and-so's family. And you find your identity through your family. But eventually, each one of us, uh, even if we find our identity or who we are through our family, eventually we try to break off and try to make our own name for ourselves. We, we want to be known for who we are and for maybe the gifts that we have been given. Uh, for me, uh, when I was telling you that I know that as far back as I can remember, I always tried to um, do my own thing at age 15. And I've shared this with you uh, in my testimony before, but at age 15, I ran away. And the reason I ran away from home is because I was Make, try to make my own way, my own path uh, for myself. And because of my pride, I wanted to prove to my dad and everybody else that I can do it on my own. <laughs> and that was a very rebellious 
spirit. But that was the way I thought at that time. I wanted to do what I wanted, when I wanted it. I didn't want anybody to tell me, not even my dad, tell me what to do. And at age 15, because of that rebellious uh, spirit, I left and lived on my own for a whole year. And I had to learn things for, you know, the hard way and eventually came back to my dad. Uh, but that's what I can, I've learned in my experience. But I know that you know, many of us trying to find out who we are, trying to find out that sense of purpose, we, we try to take things in our own hands, maybe not so much as a rebellious way as I did, but it, eventually each one tries to find out who they are through their gifts or through their talents uh, or through their hobbies or the things that they do. Um, whether you, you know, when you grew up in high school, I remember they used to, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Who, who are you going to be? And I never knew the answer to that question, but there are many that do because of the God-given gifts that they're given. Uh, they can be a singer. They can be a piano player. They can be an architect. Uh, they can be a painter. They can be a construction worker. Or, you know, there's many different talents uh, that the Lord gives, and you'll find your, your niche as you grow up in life. You'll find what you're good at, especially if you have good parents that lead you the right way, that encourage you. And, um, you know, and like my dad, he, he wanted to teach me things, but I just was so rebellious that I, you know, I had to learn things by, uh, the hard way. But there are some kids that aren't so rebellious, and they'll learn from their parents. And they'll be encouraged to uh, find out what they're good at and to continue in that. And then they find their identity in that gift or that talent. Or, you know, they go to school to be a doctor. Or they go to school to be a nurse. Or, you know, they find their different ways or path in life. Uh, so we're all really trying to make a name for ourselves or try to find our own identity. Uh, there are some that, you know, like, like me, will find... Uh, try to find their way through their sin or try to find out who they are through their sin. Uh, if you go to the alcoholic, uh, alcoholist, alcoholic anonymous, um, you'll find many that say, hello, my name is, I'm an alcoholic. And their identity is in the fact that they've been addicted to alcohol. Well, they're, they're sober at the time, but their identity is that they've had this addiction to alcohol. Or they say, hey, I, my name is, I'm a heroin addict, or, you know, so and so forth. And they'll fi find their identity in, in uh, the things that they had done wrong and in their sin. And so many of us, it, as going through life, uh, you know, whether we're prospering or whether we're not, uh, we will find our, our, you know, who we are and the things that we do. <clears throat> but it's it's tough it, it really is tough uh coming into this world uh, not really knowing who you are not really knowing what your purpose is in life um and trying to make it in this world under the pressure under the influence and the ways of this world uh we can we try to do the best that we can i guess in our own strength we can try to do the best that we can to find our out our own purpose in the life in in this life and really under the pressure and um the ways of this world it's either you make it or break it either you make a name for yourself or you're you uh you you know you prosper and trying to find out who you are and trying to find out your identity and what things you're good at and you can prosper in this life uh you know, so much in this world, or the pressure or the weight of the things of this world uh, will break you. And so really, I see it like that, that you'll either make it or break it as you're trying to find a name for yourself or a way for yourself or trying to find out a purpose for yourself. And this morning, I, I you know, the message is on what man's creative purpose is, what we were created for. You know, we all have that deep down uh sense of purpose, I believe, sense of identity or wanting to know who we are and why we're here. Um, but uh, our purpose and the creative purpose that God has created us for is to glorify him and to honor him. But if we go after the things of this world and we try to find our, our way under the pressure and under the ways of this world, uh, even if we prosper to the fullest, even if we get everything that this world has to offer, we do the best that we can. Uh, we spend you know, all of our time in strengthening the gifts that we have. We spend all of our time in learning and growing and prospering and whatever it is that you're good at. And you, you're, you know, that's who you are. And you just, you're so good at it and you prosper. You are prosperous in this world. Um, if everything... Uh, 
Everything under the sun is vanity, is what I'm trying to get at. And so even if we were to prosper to the fullest according to what this world has to offer, it is all still vanity. Let me read to you Ecclesiastes chapter 2. This is what Solomon, who was King David's son, who was given wisdom directly from God, uh, he was given a request, and God, would, uh, God told him he would answer whatever request he, he had to bring to him. And the very thing that King Solomon asked for was wisdom. Well, uh, it took wisdom for King Solomon to find this out. Uh, he did try to go after everything that the world had to offer, and he did prosper in everything that this world had to offer. But he, this is what the conclusion was. This is what he came to. And, and he says in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, I'll start at verse 3. He says, I sought in my own heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the uh, provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. From them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and all the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. So it takes true wisdom to come to this point that King Solomon came to. It, take true, it takes true wisdom to come to that place of giving everything that you have into this world and using everything that this world has to offer to prosper yourself, to make a name for yourself, to do the best that you can. And King Solomon had everything. I mean, you read all these things that he had, um, all the works that he did, uh, all the people that served him and were under him, and he was... Uh, the most prosperous king that he said there was none greater before him in Jerusalem and he had all these things at his disposal and yet in all of that he came to the point of finding out that everything underneath the sun is vanity the things of this world can only give a temporary sense of peace and purpose and so when we're trying to find our way in this life when we're trying to find our, our identity or or our purpose we do. We go after the things that this world has to offer because that's all that we know. Uh, but there is still this sense of uh, longing of a greater purpose within us. And, and uh, King Solomon reached the point of knowing that no matter what he did in this world, no matter what he put his hands to, it wasn't profitless. It was only temporary and it would vanish. It would come to nothing. Proverbs 27.20 says, Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. That void, uh, that longing that we try to fill, uh, that we try to satisfy ourselves, and we, we can do it in good things. A lot of these things that I'm talking about are not just going after your sin or the lust of the flesh. Uh, much of it has to do with it does have to do with the pride of life uh, when you're trying to make a name for yourself and trying to make your make a way for yourself in this in this world. Uh, a lot of it does have to do with the, the pride of life, but none of it will ever bring a true satisfaction or a true peace. Maybe temporary. You might like King Solomon said he had some joy and uh, he rejoiced in his labor, but he realized that this was all of his portion and that there was nothing more. And all of this would 
soon one day pass. Because we come into this world with nothing and we'll leave this world with nothing. And so there's a greater sense of purpose. And I know that you guys know this, but this is what God has created us for. He's created us to glorify him and to honor him in everything that we do, to please him in everything that we do. So true wisdom will bring us to the point and will show us that the best that we can do, that is the best that we can do under the sun, the best that we can do in this world, the best that we can do with our own hands, by our own strength, uh, is vanity. And that we are lost and that we are blind and that we are dead. And when we come into this world, true wisdom, if we ever reach that point, will show us uh, that uh, we have a greater purpose. That is, we are meant to be used for something greater. We are meant to be the sons of God. We are meant to walk in his spirit. We are meant to look like our father, who our father is. Uh, but we are lost. Uh, we don't know our way. And we're trying to make a way for ourselves. We're blind. We can't see the direction that we're going. Uh, and we're dead. We truly can't produce anything that's living. We can't produce any life out of our our own labors because we are dead and all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. But again, Revelation 4.11, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. This is what he's created us for, to glorify him, to honor him. He has created us to please him in everything that we do. But we uh, have fallen short. And again, we look back at the creation and go, go to Genesis 1. And when God created man, and we can see the purpose in the very beginning of the Bible, the purpose that God created man for. In chapter 1, uh, 26 through 28. Chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish, and over the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish, and over the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God created the earth, he created everything in it, and he created man to have dominion over the earth. But man is to glorify him as in every part of his labor and in every work that God has given him. God had created him in his image, and he created him to uh, be like him and to look like him. When God created everything and he looked upon everything, in verse 31 of chapter 1, it says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. So with his creation, after he finished uh, he looked upon his creation and he said, Behold, it is good. He was pleased with his creation. And that is, our, uh, that is what our purpose is, to please God. And God was pleased with his creation. But we know that when sin entered in, uh, Adam and Eve and all of mankind have been separated from God. Man was created to uh, look like his creator, to enjoy sweet fellowship with him, and to be fruitful and everything that he does by having fellowship with him and by the works of his hands to glorify God. God has given us many gifts. He's given us many talents. And uh, he has created us in his image to look like him, to enjoy him, to have fellowship with him. But because of sin, we've been separated. Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden. They were cast out of his presence. And when we're born into this world, we're born separated from our father. We're born as orphans, not knowing who our father is. And that's, we all know, that's, that is what sin has done. We're born dead in trespasses and sin. We are born lost. I'm not saying anything new to you, but this is uh, what we are born into. And this is the state of man. Uh, there, every, you know, man and woman in this world are trying to find a way. <laughs> And they're trying to make a name for themselves, but it all leads to destruction in their own way. It's all vanity. But there is a way. There is one way. And that way, back to our Father, is through our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only way. And he is the way. 
But God created us to please him in everything that we do, and we have fallen short. We're not capable, no matter how much labor, no matter how much work, no matter how much effort we put in to it, uh, no matter how much sweat of the brow that we have, it will all come to nothing. Because we are separated from him and we're dead in our trespasses and sins. But Jesus, Jesus, everything that he did was pleasing unto his Father. In Matthew 3, um, 16 and 17, you guys know this. This is when Jesus was being baptized by John the Baptist. And let me read the verse to you. It says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus, in everything he did, he was pleasing unto his Father. God, as uh, God the Father from heaven, spoke with a loud voice so that those that were there heard. And he said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. When God looked upon his creation in the beginning and he said, it is good, he was pleased with what he created. But because of sin and because of the curse of sin, mankind has been separated from his father. And mankind has been trying to find his own way in this life, but it all comes to nothing. But God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, in the world to show us who the father is and to show us his image and to make a way for us to come back unto the Father and to, again, enjoy fellowship with him and, again, to fulfill the purpose that he created us for, to please him. <clears throat> Even as a kid, Jesus knew who he was. In uh, Luke 2.49, if you remember when... Um, his parents, uh, because of the Passover, took him to Jerusalem, took Jesus to Jerusalem at age 12. And then when they left after the time of the Passover, they left with a company of people and didn't realize that Jesus at age 12 stayed back. He tarried back and he was in the temple and he was speaking with the, the scribes and the Pharisees, the religious leaders of that day. And he was answering questions and he was asking questions, but uh, the the scribes and the Pharisees, the leaders at that time, were astonished at this 12-year-old kid with the knowledge and the wisdom that he was given. And when his parents, uh, Mary and Joseph, found out that he was not there, they came back to him and pretty much rebuked Jesus for, for not coming with them. And Jesus said unto them, uh, let me just read it to you because I'll probably quote it wrong. <clears throat> He says, I know you guys are thinking it, 2.49. Oh, and he said unto his parents, he said, How is it that you sought me? Wist you not that I must be about my father's business? Here, he's 12 years old. He knew, I mean, as he grew in wisdom and stature, he knew who he was. He knew what his purpose was. And what he came to do, he came to be about his father's business. He came to please his father. And he fulfilled that in every way. And this is why the father at the time of his baptism said, This is my beloved son in whom, whom I am well pleased. As the son of God and as the son of man, Jesus sought to do only those things which pleased his father. And he accomplished it. Because he was born of a virgin, he was born without sin, he was born uh, to seek and to save the lost. He was not lost, he was not blind. He was the author of life, the giver of life, the one that came and uh, made a way for us to be redeemed and made a way for us to come to our Father and to find out who we are, to find out who our uh, identity is. As we look on God's creation, as we look upon mankind, Man is created in God's image, but they are separated from, and they have fallen so far short, but they still have so many miraculous, so many amazing gifts that God has given them. And we can just look upon God's creation, and we can be amazed, but everything that God has given mankind was for the purpose to be used for his glory, and to honor him, and to please him with it. But we, mankind, uh, because of being separated from his creator, uses it for his own vanity, and for his own pleasure. <clears throat> but it will all come to nothing, unless, unless they come to know, 
to come to know the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus had no identity crisis. <laughs> Jesus knew who he was. Jesus was the Son of God, and he knew he came to please his Father in everything that he did. In John 8, 25 through 29, there are those that, uh, because of his teaching, because of the things that he did, because of the great uh, miracles that he did and authority that he had in his teaching, the, there were the religious leaders that came to him and they said unto him, Who art thou? They asked him, Who are you? And Jesus saith unto them in John 8, 25, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true, and I speak, I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. <clears throat> they understand not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, We have lifted you, we have lifted up the Son of I'm sorry. When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He. And that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he sent, and he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Jesus knew who he was and what he came to do. He came to please his Father, and his Father was with him in everything he did. His Father uh, was in him, and he was... Uh, with his father. His father taught him everything that he was to say. And yet there are these that came to him and they asked him, who are you? They were asking him, what authority do you have to say these things? And, uh, but Jesus knew and he told them, I, I am here to do the will of my father. And everything that he said, his father taught him. And so we learn uh, who we are when we will learn who we are from Christ and who he is. You guys still with me? <laughs> As we all are trying to find our own way and our purpose in this life, uh, we know that there's none that can truly come to the Father unless the Father draws him. Uh, there's none that really can know who the Father is uh, unless they come through Christ and um, are forgiven of their sins and they're justified by their faith. But the amazing thing is, even though that we see what sin has done to this world and we see how there's so much destruction and all the ways of man will lead to destruction, and we just see the consequences in this life and we see just the consequences in this world, but really there is an eternal death and there's an eternal destruction and all those paths lead to that. Um, but God, for, so, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever should believe in him will have uh, eternal life. And so God has made a way for us to be saved, for us to be redeemed, for us to be restored back into a place of fellowship. And so there is a way, there is one way, uh, and that way is through Jesus Christ. And that way is to uh, please our Father in everything that we do. Uh, and that only happens by Christ and through Christ, as uh, Jesus says in another place, uh, John 15, he says, you can do nothing without me. We can't do anything that's pleasing to God, to our Father, except by Christ. But he has come and he has fulfilled the way. Let me read to you another passage from John uh, 14. As Jesus is uh, telling his disciples, as he's uh, getting ready to, uh, to be crucified, to give his life up, he's uh, here now teaching his uh, disciples, and he's saying, I, in verse 3, he says, um, well, I'll, I'll just start uh, in verse 1. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. Or if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. So here Jesus is telling them that he's going to be uh, 
separated from them, that he's going to go away, but he's telling them where he's going to go. He's going unto his father. He's going to prepare a place for them. And he tells them that the way, the place that he goes, he says, and whither I go, ye know, and the way you know. And then Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Thomas is saying, we don't know where you're going and we don't know the way. And then Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. So everything that Jesus did was the will of his Father. He said everything that he spoke, he was taught of his Father. He did nothing of his own will. That is, he, even as the Son of Man, he submitted unto the will of his Father. Even... Um, in, in every situation, no matter what temptations would come his way, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he had to pray, Lord, not as not my will, but thou will be done. Uh, and he, in much excruciating pain, uh, sweating blood through his pores, submitted to the will of his Father. No matter what pressure there was upon him, he fulfilled the will of his Father. And he was the expressed image of his father. He was the visible image of the father. He says, if you've seen me, then you've seen the father. He says that here, if you had known me, you should have known the father. So this is eternal life, that uh, we should know him, that we should know Jesus Christ, and that we should know the father. Uh, this is what salvation is all about, is to know the one who's created us. Uh, it's to know him personally. It's not just to have a head knowledge, but to know him, to have fellowship with him. And Ever since the fall of man, we've been separated. And that, that sense of purpose or longing in our hearts when we're born to this world is because we were created to please him. We were created to serve him. We were created to know him. And Jesus says, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. So Jesus is the way. He has made a way for us to come to the father. And everything that he did was the will of the father. And he was the expressed image of his father. And... Um, First Colossians 1 Colossians 1.15 says, he is, Who is the image of the invisible God? Just like Jesus said, If you've seen me, then you've seen the Father. And he goes on to say, uh, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth, sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? And hath he that has seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father." So all the time and all the effort and all the energy that we put into this world, into the things of this world, trying to make our own way and trying to find our purpose or our own identity or create a name for ourselves, it really, um, apart from God, is vanity. But here we are shown the way to our Father. We are shown the way uh, and we are shown the purpose for which we've been created, that is to serve him and to please him. And God empowers us to do that as Christ abides in us. Jesus says, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, uh, works that I do shall he do also. Jesus came to please his Father. He came to do the works of his Father. He came to do the will of his Father and everything he did, that he did. And he says, in greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So he, he makes us able to fulfill our purpose through his Spirit living within us. He makes us able to please our Father. And there's no greater, uh, there's, there's no greater uh, feeling, really. I mean, you can get a sense of it in this world when you make your father or your parents proud, where you, you do good and you do the things that they want you to. But even that is, uh, you know, temporary. Um, but there's no greater sense of accomplishment when you have fellowship with your Heavenly Father and you know that you're walking in His light. You know that you're walking with Him and that He's pleased. He's pleased with you. He's ple pleased with you because of who you are. You are His Son and He loves you and you're made right in His sight. 
uh, because of Christ. And Christ lives within you. And you, produce, you, you become fruitful in him. And you produce fruit and works that are acceptable in his sight. Because it's through his spirit. It's because you have been redeemed and reconciled and brought back unto him. The father is pleased to, to see his son return back unto him. <clears throat> By faith in Christ, we are accepted in the beloved. Uh, that is, everything that has uh, separated us from him and uh, has made us not able to come to him in Christ uh, is done away with. We are justified. We are accepted. We're able to come to him uh, because of Christ. We are reconciled. There is a peace that is made. Um, and we're brought back into sweet fellowship through Christ. And again, we can be fruitful and we can multiply. We can be fruitful in spiritual things and we can multiply spiritually. We can increase the kingdom of God by, uh, by faith in Christ, by walking with him and uh, producing spiritual children as God would use us to witness to others, as God would use us to, uh, to be an example. And God empowers us to do these things by his spirit. So if you didn't know what the purpose of man was, I hope that you do now. <laughs> and I will close with one more verse. Um, but our, our creative perfect purpose is right there in uh, Revelation 4.11, is to glorify God, is to honor him, is to please him. And in everything that he empowers us with, that is to be good stewards of what he's given us. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Um, and that's not to say that this, we always will uh, please God, um, because we struggle with the flesh. But anything that's done from God living within you, in, in let me actually, before I close with the verse I was going to close with, um, take a small detour. In 1 John chapter 3, Okay. Whosoever, in verse 6, says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. When we're coming to sweet fellowship with God, we are born again. Um, we have the struggle between the spirit and the flesh, but anything that's, uh, that is produced of the spirit of God living within us uh, cannot sin. The spirit of God living within us is holy, and he sets us apart. Uh, is, is it kind of a dichotomy? I mean, it, it, it's the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. And this is kind of how I see this. I might be wrong, but anything that is sin comes from our old man. It's produced from that old, that old nature, and that's why we have to keep that old man down and keep him pinned, pinned down. But whatever uh, nature that God gives us through his Holy Spirit can't produce sin. Uh, that is, God living within us is holy, and he cannot produce sin. Uh, but anything that does produce sin in us is from our old nature. And so this is why we need to desire to grow in his Spirit and to be strengthened in the inner man so that we can uh, not, not uh, walk in a place that is um, without sin, but walk in a place that's pleasing to God and that we can keep that old man down uh, so that he doesn't uh, raise his head up and, and try to overtake us. And that's why we need to grow in God's spirit. Now, that was kind of a little detour, but uh, I hope that was helpful and made sense. Uh, I would want to I'm going to close with Colossians chapter 1. When we talk about the purpose that God has created us for, this is the prayer that, that Paul had for the Colossians. He says in verse 9, he says, For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. So Jesus and everything that he did, he did uh, what was pleasing unto the Father, and he did the will of the Father. So here Paul is saying that they might be filled with the knowledge of his will. So that they would be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, 
strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which has uh, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints and light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Now listen to this verse, for verse 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and all in all things were created by him and for him. So this, again, our created purpose. We were created for him. We were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Uh, speaking of Jesus Christ, Paul prays that they would be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that they would walk worthy unto the Lord and all pleasing and be strengthened and to grow knowledge and might. And uh, it's by the power, the same power that has translated them from power of darkness and translated it into them, uh, them into the kingdom of his dear son. This is going to be the only way to please God. The only way to do these things is by his grace, is by him living within us. So uh, let, us, let us use everything that God has given us through his word, uh, through his spirit, through prayer. Let us seek God so that we could uh, try to serve him better. And, uh, and to fulfill our purpose.